Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a special file known as underscore document.tsx. Now, this is a special file because just like I said, when we create it, it's not going to be available at slash document.tsx. But in fact, it is the file which is responsible for all the other things in your document, right? So you see that we wrote this here, this h1 here inside our index.tsx with a div. But we did not really write all this other things, doc type HTML, HTML head, you know, all these scripts and everything. We did not write that. So how did this came as a response? Well, that is precisely what document.tsx allows us to control. But for the most part, we don't really want to mess up. We don't really want to, you know, just, just mess up with the next JS things. Document.tsx is used for um, you know, injecting our own custom code, injecting our own custom scripts, which we want to be available for the whole application. So what we want to do is just go ahead, oops, inside pages, create a file called as underscore document.tsx. And first of all, just like I said, we don't want to mess up with Next.js. So what we're going to do is we're going to import certain things. I'm going to import HTML head main and next script this is um, i think what is required from next slash document and what we're going to do is we're going to actually export a class this time not a function now bear with me we're going to export a class custom document why we are doing this instead of a functional component is because we have to extend our original document and why is that because it implements certain methods, certain certain functionalities, which are important for the Next.js to actually use, right? I'm sure there's a way in functional components as well where we can assign this document somewhere in the prototype chain. But the best way, the cleanest way is to just make use of class-based component in a single file. You know, just, just bite the bullet and use it for once in your whole application. Because document tsx would honestly be a very small file even after you customize it so what we want again with class-based components we just need to have a single render function and what we want to return is basically the whole structure right so we want head right there don't really focus a lot on these tags right now we're going to be making use of head again somewhere in the next videos but i don't really want you to conf get confused with this head right here so I'm going to keep that blank. We're going to write main. And finally, we're going to write the next script as well. Right. And actually, the main should really go inside the body, which is a re regular HTML tag, you know. And let's just restart the server once because it does not really capture changes for document and app. And if we reload now, you're going to see nothing really changes. But what we can do now is that we can go ahead and inject something like meta property custom and then value um, i don't know yolo something like that right and it's uh, i don't know what's what's the content yeah so here we have it refresh you can see now that we have a meta property custom and content yolo right now the point is that this is actually available on every page even on pages which are 404 right so you can see that we get 404 this page cannot be found but we still have the yolo property available for us because this is the absolute base template which is used by next.js for rendering things for rendering your page right so a bunch of things use this file as minimal as you can number one because this is a root file this is something which can control your whole application so you never really want to mess a lot with the global files so just just you know use this file if you want to probably inject some sort of meta tag which is for verification purposes of your website or i don't know just just keep the usage of this file to minimal because for the most part you will be able to customize all the titles all the head stuff everything using um the actual 
you know, the actual pages which are available right here. So you can do all that stuff from here as well. So, you know, if you want to inject a particular script, you can use that. This would be available then throughout the web pages, throughout the website, some analytics scripts, anything, you can do that. So yeah, I mean, that would be pretty much it for this video. And in the next one, we're gonna be exploring another file called as underscore app.tsx, which is slightly different than this one. And we're gonna be understanding how's that. So that's all for this one. And I'm gonna see you in the next video.